challenge of my job is that maybe every couple of days or every week you'll be asked to do something you don't know how to do. A lot of times the developers are ahead of the designs and so we're like building all of these weapons to do certain things and the challenge is when design sort of catches up to the, the development then a lot of rework is required, a lot of changes to how we've built things. And I think that the most exciting and the most challenging part is like getting on the same page with the designer and, and understanding what they want and then trying to figure out how to make that work and when it's not going to work, how you can compromise to create something that will work. That's just, that's the life of an engineer, right? It's just, you know, somebody gives you a problem and, you know, you hope to high hell you can figure it out by the time they need it. There's a lot of back and forth between the designers and the programmers to get something that aims the right way, that shoots the right kind of thing. That's also why I love being an engineer, is that it never gets boring. I think the most unique aspect of the game where um, we've really had to you know, add some coding, some engineering effort into getting it to feel right is the input system. The two finger joystick control was an attempt to take a console control system and make it work for mobile and I don't think it did. There are just too many problems with the touch screen not having a, a boundary, you know, like you go off the edge and you lose your control. But if you think about it, with an iPad you can touch any pixel you want with your finger, so why would you emulate a joystick on an iPad? It doesn't make any sense. Our, our approach is completely different, just hey, here's a new input scheme. Um, here's what's fundamentally important to make the experience fun, uh, visceral. Uh, feel like you have control, or feel like you can get better at it. Those are the things that are important. How do we use that touch input to make that stuff happen, rather than how do we emulate a control scheme that, that works somewhere else? It's very important that uh, when you're playing a fast-paced game that it responds quickly. And there's some technical challenges and inherent hardware limitations with the device in terms of when you touch on the screen, when that input can come back. And so we have to deal with that latency, that kind of delayed response, and you know, do some clever things to try to almost you know, anticipate what the player is going to be able to do, or what the player is going to want to do, uh, to make that feel quick and responsive. So we have to differentiate between shooting and the other game mechanics very quickly, but also very accurately, because it can be very frustrating to have input in, in the game that doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. So we spent a lot of time tweaking that and trying to get it perfect so that you have a great gameplay experience. There are certain low-level things you don't need to code. Touch is kind of one of them. Like the, the device gives you the X and Y coordinates of the place that you touch. And then that X and Y coordinate needs to be converted into a world space coordinate. That's it's the position of that touch in the 3D environment. And then in order to convert that into something that gets shot, what you do is you take the player's eye position and then the, the coordinate of the touch in world space and you create a vector that runs along that line and you shoot it out into the world and then there's a little bit of linear algebra that helps you figure out like where that point hits and then you know you you get that actor that it hits and you you look at it and you're like, what did I just smack into? Like is it a wall? Is it an enemy? If it's an enemy, you modify some of its properties. You might take away its health. You might destroy some of its inventory, so on and so forth. Games tend to run at a frame rate, and they also tend to operate at like a tick count, which can be 30 frames a second. And we need to have much more finer control over that input system because we don't just look at the uh, up or down event, we look at how the finger tracks across the screen, how much, how much time it's taking, the rate at which it's going, that kind of information, and we've needed it very precise. So we've had to go in and kind of add that precision into the underlying engine. And then when you get here, the instruction wouldn't return until you landed, and then you're going to need to do another move to node here, so you would need like special action. Just having a jump oh, instruction. Yes. You'll have move to, and then there'll be a jump instruction, and then you'll move yeah. to the final place. You can just use the move to yeah. action without any special jump instruction. Like, if, if it's moving to this, we can detect it in the pathfinding code. How do we detect it in the pathfinding code? Well, it would be an environment, though. So once you hit it, you can, you can prepare the, the movement through it.
Oh, right, right, right. So, the, so the, you'd still pathfind to this. We could detect, hey, this is a jump node. Yes. Actually, the, the only thing this node does is jump. So when they get here, we know jump. The Unreal Engine is very mature, very complex piece of technology that's been really in development for many years by a lot of people. So it can be a very daunting piece of technology to try to deal with for the first time. For this game, because our input system is so different from other games, we've had to go into the engine, figure out what, what they've done, how they've solved the problem for their own games, and then modify it for ours. Everything in a game, and pretty much everything in the world, can be broken down into a set of data, functions which modify that data, and then the visual representation of that data. Being a gameplay engineer, basically it's my job to take the ideas that the creative team has and figure out how to represent everything in the game using data, algorithms, or different mathematical systems. Lately I've been really focused on working on the Unreal Engine code. I'm in charge of doing all of the human weapons. So I work with Paul and designers Aaron, Jonathan Culp on creating the Unreal Script files to bring to life the weapons that have been designed into the game. Unreal Script is, is the scripting language that Epic wrote to aid in the process of creating objects in an Unreal Engine game. So you can write code to generate weapons, generate characters, perform game logic. So the most common language for programming video games, I would say is C++, at least sort of once you start talking AAA games. There are certain programming languages that are easier to pick up, and those are great for quick iteration and sort of smaller teams. For mobile games specifically, Objective-C has been used a lot, but it's often used in conjunction with C++ because you can run C++ within an iOS app. C++ is really the language that gives you the flexibility to write very high-level code, meaning it's very easy to read and reads more like English, and at the same time gives you the ability to write very low-level code down to the assembly level if you really need to get as much performance out of the engine as you can. On the iPad in particular, you really have to keep a constant eye out for performance issues. So, you know, we profile the game like every week. We keep a close eye on when certain function calls are starting to crop up and the amount of execution time that they're taking. If game development is your goal, I've been really impressed with the interns and the younger guys here who have gone into the large university game development programs. In my case, I have definitely done untraditional route. I've just been teaching myself programming. I think it's just a matter of like focusing on what you want to learn and going after it. The advice I'd give myself when I was younger is maybe that math is not as hard as you think it is. There's a way that math is taught that can be counterintuitive to creative types, but it's, it's really not as bad as you think it is. And if you just stick with it and find ways to apply it to game development, you'll pick it up like that. You have to be able to learn and you have to be able to learn quickly. And learning programming in Unreal Script is a lot like learning a language. You're learning to write in this, this completely different language. So it's just a matter of focusing on learning and the creative process involved with getting things to work the way the designers want them to. I would say organization is probably the number one tool for a good computer programmer. I've known a lot of computer programmers who are very strong math-wise, but their code isn't well organized, and after some amount of modifications to it, it starts to break down because it's not flexible or it's not easy to read. So I actually think that strong linguistic skills and strong writing skills are really important for programmers. For 3D games in particular, a really good working knowledge of linear algebra is an absolute must. My advice to anybody who is interested in getting into game development is to grab some of those tools because they're just freely available online. You can download the Unreal Engine, you can download Unity, you can download Game Salad, you can download all sorts of tools, uh, Flash, you know, and if you want to do something high-end 3D or you're interested in something simple and 2D, all of those tools are readily available. And whether you're a programmer, an artist, or just a designer, um, or, or a combination, like those tools 
can give you immediate access to experimenting and creating something. And I always suggest that because that's that's the best way to get yourself a little bit of experience. It's also a great way to meet other people that have you know the same kind of interest because there's lots of communities out there uh, of folks that are making games. And uh, that's also always the most impressive thing that I see in somebody's resume, like when they're looking for a job. It's not just that they, you know, they went to a great school or they did a good internship here or they got good grades or whatever, but if they've actually have a portfolio of work that they've created on their own, it, it demonstrates not just application of their talent, but also a passion for wanting to make games.